Welcome back. It's now with Dave Brown on AMI. In the days since four members of a Muslim family were killed in London, Ontario, there have been voices calling on Canadians to reflect and resolve to fight intolerance, particularly Islamophobia. One of those voices is Fareed Khan, founder of the organization Canadians United Against Hate. And Fareed joins us this morning from Ottawa. Fareed, thank you for making time to be with us today. Uh, Good morning. Glad to be here. So what kind of response have you received from the public since the London tragedy? Well, um, the the public reaction obviously has been supportive. It's been sympathetic. Um, There have been uh, people who agree that uh, we need to address uh, not just Islamophobia, but all forms of hate because we've had too many incidents of hate attacking uh, uh, people from different backgrounds. But certainly uh, Muslims have been on the top of the list in terms of people being targeted for um, for hate. And certainly they're the only community that's literally paid in blood for that. In a recent media release, you said that the liberal and conservative governments have planted seeds of Islamophobia in the years since since September 11th, 2001. How have they done so? Well, if uh, people uh, can think back to the uh, to the months and years following uh, the 9-11 attacks in uh, New York and Washington, D.C., um, there seemed to be a frenzy uh, in governments, and, and it was uh, reported by media with little thought to how it was going to affect the Muslims, where uh, the government put in place legislation and policies to uh, tackle terrorism, Al-Qaeda-inspired terrorism, and in later years, ISIS-inspired terrorism. But little thought was given to the language that was used, and the main, um, the main victims of that frenzy, uh, which uh, came about from paranoia and fear, were Muslims. Muslims were targeted. Um, there was language that was used by some politicians, and certainly uh, in, uh, in the media widely, where Muslims were vilified, Islam was seen as a um, as a threat to Western civilization, and the result of that was, uh, you know, Islamophobia. And uh, Muslims have been paying a price for that for the last two decades. Some of that political rhetoric remains in place. It continues to be used from politicians trying to stoke the fires of their base. Do you think tragedies like this, at least? make politicians contemplate the use of that kind of language, contemplate the, that tactic that they use on the campaign trail? Well, you would think that would be the case, but, you know, we thought that was going to be the case after the Quebec City mosque attacks, where six uh, Muslims were killed while worshipping um, in January 2017. But uh, what did we get <clears throat> after those uh, attacks? There was a motion that was being debated uh, in uh, Parliament M103 was a motion to um, study Islamophobia. And all but one of the Conservative caucus voted against that motion, as did the Bloc Québécois caucus. So when I saw Aaron O'Toole and Yves-Francois Blanchet, who both stood up in the House of Commons last week and um, and uh, you know talked about fighting Islamophobia, all I could see was hypocrisy dripping from their words. Because these two men voted against the motion, their caucuses voted against the motion, and the language that was used in the discussion and debate around M103 actually stoked Islamophobia in Canada. Hmm. Speaking of legislation, Bill 21 in Quebec has come under tremendous focus, the so-called secularism law. How does legislation like that impact this conversation? Oh, it impacts it in a huge way. Um if uh, if people recall, there was there was considerable debate around this motion and about how, although it was uh, targeting all racialized religious minorities in Quebec, the primary targets of that uh, legislation was intended to be uh, Muslims, and Bill Twenty One was the uh, conclusion of more than a decade of attempts by the Quebec government to. Um, basically restrict the rights of uh, Muslims. Before that, we had uh, Bill 62, which the Liberals put in place, which was a niqab ban, which was struck down in the courts. Uh, Before that, we had the so-called Charter of Values by the PQ. Um, And uh, before that, there were recommendations uh, or 
uh, people who spoke at the reasonable accommodation debates who were calling for things like the restrictions on mosques to be built. And uh, if you recall, um, when uh, Quebec City uh, mosque shooting happened, there was a problem finding a place to bury those men because for years the request for a Muslim cemetery had been denied. So even in death, Muslims are still facing Islamophobia. Um, and uh, while there has been arrangements made, uh, uh, there is still not a cemetery where Muslims can be buried within a reasonable driving distance of uh, Quebec City. So it goes on. It still goes on today. Especially in the case of Quebec, many federal leaders try to keep that at arm's length or, or will not make comments or sometimes even condone that kind of legislation. What's, what, what's the risk there for federal leaders not willing to take a stance on such an important issue? Well, basically, it says that any comments or, or um, uh, statements they make about being in defense of human rights are absolute hypocrisy. Because if you're going to be in defense of human rights, you're in defense of the rights of all people, regardless of where it is in this country. Um, back in the in 2019, when the federal election was happening, this issue came up also, and all the federal leaders, um, uh, with the exception of Justin Trudeau, said they would not intervene uh, in in Quebec on Bill 21. Justin Trudeau said he would, you know, he he would uh, consider intervening. But in, you know, in the months following the uh, election, he did absolutely nothing. So as far as I'm concerned, he's no better than uh, the other federal leaders. Mm. Muslims' rights are being violated by the state in Quebec. And it's being done deliberately and with intent. Um, and, and certainly the rights of other minorities, Jews, Sikhs, and others uh, faiths that visibly display their faith are also being violated. But the main targets are Muslims. And what has happened since that legislation was put in place was that the increase or the attacks against Muslims increased. There was a poll done around the time that the um, legislation uh, was uh, coming to its conclusion and uh, about to be adopted. And that poll said that the majority of Quebecers support the bill because of their anti-Muslim stance. So it's clearly about Islamophobia and it's nothing else. Freed, I know this question is difficult, but last week we did have allies and advocates calling for meaningful change. To your mind, what does meaningful change look like at the political level in Canada? Well, I think uh, for a start, uh, it would be great if the Federalist leaders in, um, in Parliament actually formed a united front against Bill 21. Uh, that would be a, That would send a huge signal. Um, that uh, we're not going to allow the rights of any community to be violated by the state in this country. Um, secondly, uh, there needs to be a national, nationally uh, coordinated uh, effort to launch an anti-hate, anti-racism strategy in this, in this country. Um, not too different from the way that the federal government has led a uh, pandemic strategy during COVID-19. There needs to be a nationally coordinated strategy to address the pandemic of hate, racism, and bigotry in this country. Um, there also needs to be a public education campaign that uh, you know, basically presents Muslims for who they are. They are members of this uh, country. They are Canadians, and they have the same hopes and dreams and ambitions as any other Canadian, regardless of their faith. There also needs to be efforts with uh, to work with provincial governments to put in place education, uh, mandatory education in schools about um, racism in this country, because this country was founded on racism and white supremacy, and it was founded on the genocide of people whose land was stolen. Hmm. Um, that feeds into the racism we see today against other um, against other minority groups. We also have to have a public discussion about the issue of white privilege because people don't realize it, but anybody who comes from a white European background has the privilege of not having to deal with the sort of obstacles and, and persecution and oppression that uh, you know black, indigenous, uh, people of color face. So those are just some things, but there was 18 recommendations which Canadians United Against Hate put out that um, outlined what uh, sort of things need to be done 
um, to address uh, this this pandemic of hate in this country. Farid, it's such an important cause and it's such an important conversation. Where can the audience learn more about Canadians United Against Hate? Well, we are primarily on social media. You can find Canadians United Against Hate on Facebook and on uh, on Twitter. Um, in addition, I think that uh, just uh, in general, to do you know your own small part to address hate or or uh, you know make uh, strides against hate, people need to call it out. People need to call out whether it's Islamophobia or anti-black, anti-indigenous racism, anti-Semitism, whatever. It needs to be called out when it's uh, when it's done. And also, Canadians need to put pressure on politicians. They have the ability to start this ball rolling of um, undertaking a national effort to fight hate. But without pressure from the public and without coming out to events that take place uh, publicly, demonstrations, protests, and so forth, that's not going to happen. We've seen the power of the people in the streets when... We saw the Black Lives Matter uh, racism, anti-racism protests last year. We saw the power of the people in, with respect to um, supporting Indigenous rights after the bodies of those 215 Indigenous children were found in Kamloops. And that's what needs to happen on this. There needs to be um, Canadians who step up and say, I'm not going to have this in my country. Mm-hmm. Accountability across the board through and through. Fareed, exactly. thank you. Thank you for making time for us today. I'm sorry that every time we speak with you, it has to be under such tragic circumstances, but thank you for making time. Well, thank you for having me and thank you for covering the subject.